The endocannabinoid system, or ECS, influences multiple physiologic processes. This intricate system modulates energy intake, as well as nutrient transport, metabolism and storage. The ECS regulates these processes through endogenous ligands, such as anandamide and 2-arachidonyl glycerol, and the CB1 receptor. CB1 receptors are located in the brain, digestive tract, muscle and adipose tissue. Integration of these central and peripheral ECS components is achieved through neuronal and hormonal signaling. Within the brain, CB1 receptors are among the most abundant G-protein coupled receptors. However, in contrast to classical signaling, where information travels from pre- to post-synaptic neurons, the ECS uses retrograde signaling. The information travels from post- to presynaptic neuron. Let's take a closer look at this mechanism using a glutamatergic neuron model. When an action potential reaches the axon terminal, membrane depolarization triggers the release of glutamate. Glutamate binds to postsynaptic glutamate receptors, inducing calcium channels to open. During periods of intense neural activity, calcium accumulates in the postsynaptic neuron. This calcium buildup causes the synthesis and release of endocannabinoids from membrane lipids. Diffusing across the synaptic cleft, the endocannabinoids bind to the CB1 receptor, activating the G proteins. Activation influences ion flow. The result, suppression of presynaptic neurotransmitter release. Endocannabinoids are subsequently taken back into the cell and enzymatically degraded. In addition to acting as neural messengers, endocannabinoids mediate paracrine and autocrine signaling in adipocytes, hepatocytes, and other cells. endocannabinoid system activity in the central nervous system regulates food intake. For example, ECS stimulation by hunger and fasting signals stimulates appetite and increases the palatability of food. Endocannabinoids slow gastric emptying and GI transit and appear to stimulate secretion of ghrelin, a neuropeptide that increases appetite and food intake. After eating, Cholecystokinin in the duodenum triggers satiety signals. Subsequently, ECS activity is decreased through suppression of CB1 expression. An increase in the adiposity hormone leptin decreases endocannabinoid levels in the hypothalamus and decreases food intake. ECS regulation of peripheral metabolism influences energy balance. Stimulation of the ECS increases food intake and adiposity. Conversely, blocking CB1 receptors reduces food intake and adiposity. In the liver, ECS stimulation can lead to lipogenesis through the activation of hepatic lipogenic enzymes and increased fatty acid synthesis. Chronic stimulation of the ECS is associated with dyslipidemia. Activation of CB1 receptors increases expression of SREBP1C, a lipogenic transcription factor, and increases fatty acid synthesis. SREBP1C increases production of lipogenic enzymes, ACC1, and fatty acid synthase. Increased fatty acid synthesis can lead to production of large triglyceride-rich VLDL. Large triglyceride-rich VLDL sets the stage for the atherogenic lipid profile of small, dense LDL, decreased levels of atheroprotective HDL, and overall increases in cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Adiponectin, another hormone secreted by adipocytes, regulates lipid and glucose metabolism. Adiponectin is believed to regulate fatty acid oxidation in muscle and liver, thus improving insulin sensitivity. CB1 receptor stimulation in adipocytes reduces adiponectin, while CB1 blockade increases adiponectin synthesis. 
Metabolic dysregulation leads to a constellation of symptoms, including abdominal obesity, atherogenic dyslipidemia, hypertension, insulin resistance, prothrombotic state, and pro-inflammatory state. As basic and clinical research progresses, we will continue to increase our understanding of the central and peripheral endocannabinoid system and its role in the regulation of metabolic function. Two scientists at the California Pacific Medical Center found that a compound in marijuana and the non-psychoactive compound in marijuana can actually stop cancer from metastasizing, and that means spreading. So this is actually great news. Uh, they were able to, you know, come to this conclusion in the laboratory, and then they tested this uh, on uh, lab rats, on animals, and they saw that it had the same effect. So they're hoping that pretty soon they can do uh, clinical trials on actual cancer cancer patients to prove that this would be effective in cancer. Now, there's a gene in cancer, it's known as ID1, and it's what causes cancer to spread. However, CBD is the non-psychoactive chemical compound in marijuana that has been found to stop the cancer from spreading. So it basically stops uh, ID1. So I didn't know this until I did more research, but CBD is the compound, the chemical compound in marijuana that actually relieves anxiety and nausea, right? But of course, the psychoactive component of it is what makes you feel, you know, good. <laughs> you know what's funny <laughs> about human beings? Look, so in some ways, how many stories have we done? Like, you know, they make this one drug that apparently absolutely kicks ass, marijuana, illegal. Like, and it's substance one. Oh my God, it's the most dangerous drug. Schedule one, yeah. It's schedule, what the hell, uh -huh. right? Okay, and it turns out that it's got like 28 different awesome benefits for you, okay? Including maybe curing cancer. Does it get any better than that? Oh, it's very dangerous. Get drunk instead. Okay, so not only do you have all that, but the funny thing about human beings is, look, if we're gonna have that it cure cancer, make sure people are not having a good time while doing that, okay? Remove right. the, that, that part of it that gets you high. Well, Why? look, there's, I know, <laughs> Can I know. we cure cancer while getting high? Well, I, I Wouldn't assume, that be like a twofer? I, su I assume you could do that, but look, the researchers are genuine about wanting to, you know, cure cancer, and you, they want to make sure that they don't come across any, you know, federal drama when it comes to this, right? No, no, Any type I, of ridiculous regulation when it comes to this. But, you know, another thing that they noted that is very, very important for you guys to understand is that they said that simply smoking the pot is not enough to metastasize the cancer. My name is Rick Simpson. I live at 344 Little Forks Road, just outside of Macan, Nova Scotia. I'm here to tell you about the most medicinal plant known to man, hemp. Oils made from the hemp plant are the most medicinally active substances ever found in nature. Up until about 85 years ago, hemp medicines were widely used all over the world. Many drug companies in the 1800s and early 1900s produced hemp medicines for decades. Hemp is a plant and therefore it cannot be patented. To drug companies, no patent means no money, hence no interest in producing this drug. When you examine bud from the hemp plant, you can see that it is covered in resin. This resin makes the bud appear to be covered in frost. This resin is the medicine. When collected and processed properly, the resulting oil is an effective cure or control for practically any disease known to man, even cancer. We have supplied this oil to dozens of people with cancer. Even people who were diagnosed with terminal cancer by our medical system now have a clean bill of health after treatment with hemp medicine. When working with this medicine, medical miracles are a common occurrence. This oil has brought many people right off their deathbeds. Due to the restrictions put in place by our government against this medicine, we feel that it is our duty to inform the public how they can make their own. In reality, this medicine should be produced on a grand scale in a controlled environment using the highest quality starting material. Producing hemp medicine in this manner would stabilize the potency of this medication, plus any danger associated with this medicine's production could be eliminated. High potency hemp oil can be produced right in your own home or workshop. Later in this video, we will show you how this can be accomplished observing simple rules of safety. 
We do not approve of or condone this method due to the safety issues involved, and we bear no responsibility if this information is misused. If you or someone you care about has a life-threatening medical condition that our medical system has failed to help, there is a very good chance that hemp oil is the answer to your problems. There are three different ways to use the oil as a medication. You can ingest it, you can vaporize it, or you can use it topically. But for internal diseases like cancer, lung cancer, that type of thing, uh, the internal treatment works magnificently. Well, I've had four open heart surgeries and probably five pacemakers. I've been through the mill as far as medical stuff goes. And I started taking this because my father was taking it for his cancer, which he doesn't have anymore, but this came along, it worked perfect. It lets me do a day's work, or as much as I can safely. Let's face it, after four open hearts, you are still limited to what you can do, but I go all day. We, the wife and I four-wheeler all over the place. We, uh, it virtually gave me my life back without the pain. I have suffered from uh, major depression since the age of 27. I suffer from anxiety attacks. I've also had three back injuries with, with constant aching in my back and that for years. And uh, when I took this medicine, uh, it seemed to take the aching from my back. It seems to cut down my panic attacks. And as late as I keep going on, it just seems to get better and better, my depression and anxiety attacks. I had a huge mole on my shoulder that was black and that it had a crusty, it wasn't a natural mole and I'd been sort of concerned about it. And so actually knowing from Rick mentioning that it cured skin cancer and removed stuff like that, I decided to put a little oil on my mole and see if it works. So I put a little band-aid over it. I only applied it for like three days and then another four and then in two weeks it was completely gone. Well I had skin cancer. It's melanoma cancer, they told me. I was treated time after time and I was burnt several times. I call it burnt, they have another name for it, but anyway, they, they burnt me several times and uh, it wasn't doing no good. All the salve they gave me, I put it on and put it on. So I ran across this fellow they called Ricky Simpson. Well, you see my face, I know it's all wrinkled up, but there are no big holes in it. I use hemp oil for a number of conditions, migraine headaches, cyst on my ovary, arthritis, bad, bad skin allergies, snoring, upset stomach, diarrhea, bad, something wrong with my bowels, and helped with every condition that I had. I had two months to live. I was cashing in, I didn't care then, and got a hold of Rick, and Rick explained it, how this stuff works. The chemo and, and the radiation just kills everything inside of you. It doesn't give you a chance to live. And then when I look at my hemp oil, that's why I am sitting here today telling you that hemp oil does work. Skin conditions, cancer, diabetes, infections, glaucoma, arthritis, chronic pain, burns, ulcers, warts and moles, any condition involving mutating cells, migraine headaches, asthma, insomnia, anxiety and depression. It works to regulate your weight. It heals scar tissue. It rejuvenates vital organs. In fact, I would like someone to show me what it can't heal. When we began, Rick asked me to find out if there was any detrimental effects to the hemp oil. As we searched, we couldn't find any. And the research kept coming back with all the good aspects 